market, bbc.co.uk. Mm. We've been talking about lap dancing clubs. Now, I asked you, what is wrong with lap dancing clubs? Well, Sean Young used to be a lap dancer and has used what she learned there to create a new business for herself. Hi, Sean. Welcome to the program. Hi. How are you? I'm good. Um, how did you come to work in the clubs? Um, well, I spent. I was made homeless when I was 15 years old, and I spent seven years on the street. So I had no knowledge, uh, no studies, no exams, qualifications, no work history. So basically, I wanted to improve my life. So I wanted to go to college, and I had to raise money to um, pay for my flights, childcare, tuition, because I was a single mother as well. And um, I had nothing, no other choice but to go and lap dance. Um, and what was your experience? How did you find the clubs? Um, I thanked that I'd been homeless for so long because I could see a lot of the stuff that was going on that a lot of people didn't see because they were kind of wet behind the ears. But um, I just found I had to be really strong. I had to know that, that I was in there to get my money for college and then I was out. So what you're saying is the strength and the thick skin that you'd built up from living on the streets probably protected you working in the clubs. Yeah, it definitely did. Because there was many um, young women who were a bit confused about what was going on. There was some women as well who were highly aware of what they were doing. And they were going in, they were making their money for a certain reason and they were leaving. Did you feel as if you were a victim and a victim of exploitation? Um, I think the exploitation goes both ways in clubs. The guys think that they're exploiting the women and the women think they're exploiting the guys and really there's just no understanding going on between anybody and people are just grappling for money and attention. I know that you've left them behind now. We'll talk in a moment about what you're doing now. There is this huge row raging, well, in one town we picked Bedford, but it's raging all over England and in the Channel Islands about whether or not these sex entertainment clubs add anything to a town. I mean, as somebody who's experienced working in them and has now left them behind, how do you feel about them from your perspective now? From my perspective now, I wish there wasn't the customer and then there wouldn't be the industry. Because I don't think it's very nice at all. I don't think it's nice. I can understand why people do it, and I can understand that it is the world we live in and these things exist. But, you know, in, in my kind of view, as a perfect world, like, you just, you know, we just don't need to do that. Would you ban there's them? Lo there's lonely guys, you know, there's lonely guys. They, they think that they're getting attention, but they're just feeding their own loneliness because they know they're paying for that attention. And there's girls who are in vulnerable positions who are dancing and, you know, they think they're being cool, they're getting all their nails done and they're paying all this money out. Half of them have no knowledge about how to make the money last and how to have a short experience there and make it work. So I think if people can make it work, then it's obviously good for them. You sound almost, from your perspective now, Sean, as if you might support the local councillors who are campaigning against sex entertainment venues? Um, I, I, don't see the, I don't see what they give, you know, because I run a business now that's, that's focused on women's self-esteem and fitness. And as an industry, we are getting absolutely no support for the businesses we run. And we get marginalised because of the lap dancing bars. We're always tarred with the same brush. Nobody will get their head out of the fact that we're teaching women strength and fitness and men are now joining in in this fitness. And it's a massive industry in craze. And so it really does do my head in that people can't separate the two. Explain it, because I'm, I haven't quite got my head around what the business is that you're now doing now that you've left those clubs behind. Well, for instance, all of my qualifications are fitness. They're all um, fitness industry accredited, basically. And we're teaching fitness classes. We're teaching strength. We're teaching toning, cardiovascular workout. And that is what the pole does. The pole is a brilliant um, tool for, for fitness. But when you put the pole in these clubs where everybody's grappling for money and there's no respect for each other, it becomes a very dark place. So are you doing sort of the pole dancing within a gym sort of venue? I run my own dance and fitness studio. So, yeah, it's all, it's all within a gym and a dance studio. We dance, basically. And how popular is it? 
Uh, it's very popular and one of the main struggles of my industry is that women don't want to do it because they're scared that they'll be tarred with the brush of what this um, uh, lap dancing industry is, is portraying. So actually, in a way, it would be useful for you and people doing what you do to actually close the industry down. Because then there could yeah. be no confusion. Yeah, but, um, you know, reality, I'm quite a realistic person. And the reality is, you know, it's a massive industry as well. And it's been rooted in, it's rooted in, in many places where people would not say it's rooted, you know. So, yeah, I'm kind of a realistic girl. I don't think it's going to happen. Maybe that's because, what, people of power use these places as well as the men that you described as being a bit lonely and maybe a bit yeah. sad. Yeah, when even um, big bosses go f out for their big lunches, their corporate meetings, they take their, their friends to the lap dancing bar to show them a good time in the evening. You know, that is where that is where it's ingrained. And that is why that people can't separate it, because these guys are going in there and then they're going into their office and they're pretending to do good for the community and change the world. And yet they know that later on at night, they're exploiting women in bars and the women are exploiting them as well. Sean, it's been fascinating to talk to you. Many congratulations on the new business. Thank you. That was Sean Young, who, as you heard, danced in the clubs and now has, in a way, with a twist on what she used to do, set up a very successful business. Would you, though, go along to a dance studio that featured the poles? Would you feel that would be OK? Or do you think, in a way, by going to that class, people might confuse you as having ambitions to work in the clubs?